za Bwana
our time. Happy New Yes, I am in Yes, I am in Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, I want to praise him to go to the church. I love to watch you. Please go ahead. Let's sing. Hallelujah.
for what he has done for me. What shall I render to Jehovah? Oh, hallelujah. Lord, I say thank you to you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let's sing together. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Katika jina la Yesu Kristo tumesifu na kuabudu na kila mwenye mungu za seme. Hallelujah. Naomba tafadhali utafute mahali pazuri uketi. Ningewaambia kila mtu amwambie mwingine Happy New Year tusaliniane lakini tunakuwa restricted tunajua hivyo. Tunakuwa restricted. Kwa hivyo unaweza mfanyia kichwa tu hivi mwanzako. Mwambie Happy New Year kwa kichwa tu kwa kichwa tu kwa kichwa tu kwa kichwa tu. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bwana tunakushukuru pokea sifa na utukufu. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen. Bas karibuni ningependa tu siku ya leo. Maana Jumapili tutakuwa na kipindi tena cha kuregelea hili neno la Bwana. Lakini nyinyi nyi ambao mmefika nataka mshukuru Mungu kwa sababu mtakuwa wa kwanza kusikia neno hili likitoka kinywani mwa Mungu kunipitia mimi ili kwamba tuweze kulishiriki pamoja kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Mtu aseme amen. Amina 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 amina. Sasa mwaka uliopita mwaka wa 2000 mepita tu dakika chache zimepita hapa 2021 na na moja. ni mwaka tulioupatia jina wakati ule tuliita mwaka wa mambo mapya the year of new things 2021 tulisoma kutoka kitabu cha Isaya uh, 43 16 to 21 nakumbuka tulisoma pale na tukaongea mambo mengi sana na mimi naamini kabisa kwa kufikia leo ku watu wana ushuhuda mambo mapya. Wengine walikuwa wanafanya kazi kilifi sawa wanafanya kazi msambweni. Haleluya. Mungu ni mwema mambo mapya. Wengine walikuwa kitoka darasani wanaketi sasa ni wachungaji. Sema amen. <laughs> ni mwaka wa mambo mapya. Ni mwaka wa mambo mapya. Mwaka wa utukufu Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. We can all confirm that God has started a new order, you know, from last year a new order, particularly how church and other businesses will be conducted. I'll just go I'll just read through because if I preach we will take maybe 3 4 hours. But I want us just to go through the message as I've uh, uh, recorded it and as I've received it from the Lord so that we can together and then we will be preaching this thing for a whole month. Okay? Breaking down, breaking it down into smaller you know uh, digestible ama uh, uh, chewable chunks okay so individually there is a shift in the thinking patterns of uh, people i can think i can see that people are beginning to be more serious about their future now than they used to be before corporately there are major adjustments uh, for alignments people uh, of corporations churches are now coming together trying to adjust so they can be able to align to the very purpose of God. The way of doing things is no longer business as usual. Okay? It is important to note also that this new order will continue until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. This thing will not change. He kitu mpya si kwamba nilikuwa kitu kipya tu kwa 21 2021 it's something that's going to continue this is a move of the spirit it's a move of the spirit now you'll be surprised what watakuwa natoka maeneo ya 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 ya, ya biashara wakija mahususi kuweza kuchangia pakubwa uvivio ule ambao bwana ameanzisha wa mambo ya, ya kisasa ya kumkaribisha Yesu Kristo so the church basically is being prepared for the rapture for the coming of our lord jesus christ amen So this year by the grace of God the Lord has given us a message from the book of Acts chapter number 18 verse number 5 to number 11 Acts chapter number 18 verse number 5 to verse number 11 Okay I will read it in English and I believe uh, as we continue I can put some Swahili uh, uh, words here and there So the Bible says I'm reading from the ESV English Standard Version. Okay? It says when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word 
testifying in the Jews, uh, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, Your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. And he left there and he went to the house of a man named Titius Justus, or Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his new, with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians uh, hearing Paul believed and were baptized. And the Lord said to Paul one night in a vision, do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many in this city who are my people. And he stayed a year and six months, teaching the word of God among them. Hallelujah. That is the word of God for, for us this year. Let me give you the breakdown of this as, as, as we, we share it together. Don't please don't 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 don't, don't forget eh? verse number nine, verse number ten. Do not be afraid, but go on speaking and do not be silent. For I am with you, and no one will attack you to harm you. For I have many in this city who are my people. Hallelujah. And as a result of this word, he stayed there for another one year and a half. So let's, let's get the background information. We are a teaching church. We don't just pick a passage of scripture and run with it. We must be able to connect it with the environment, with its surrounding, so that as we share the word, we can be able to share it in context. That's very important for us as a church. So this scripture that we have just read here is Paul's second missionary journey. He had three missionary journeys. The first one started in Acts chapter 13 and ended in Acts chapter 14. Then there was a problem. Let me just give, give an overview and then keep on reading. There was a problem. Some people came from Jerusalem. They were not sent by anybody. They came from the headquarters. And when they came to in a poll, they told him, listen, you guys who are saying you are Christians, you must be circumcised. And there was a problem. You must be circumcised. You must keep the Judaism, you know. And there was a problem. And people began to argue. So they had to go to Jerusalem in Acts chapter 15 for what we call the Jerusalem Council. They went to Jerusalem, okay? So, uh, 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 like I said, this journey, the second missionary journey, started after they had come to Antioch after the Jerusalem Council in Acts chapter 15. The aim of the journey, this second journey, the aim was to strengthen the churches. You look at chapter 15, Paul is telling Barnabas, let's go back to those churches, to those people that we have talked to, those that had, had been born again. Let's go back and strengthen them. That's how they started in Acts chapter 15 towards the end there. Okay? So they were going back the second trip to encourage or strengthen the churches. And in this journey, however, new areas opened up for the gospel. Let me give you the events in this missionary journey. Paul, in chapter 15, separates with Barnabas and joins with Silas. So it's no longer Paul and Barnabas, it is now Paul and Silas. Alright? Barnabas joins himself with John Mark and they go to other places also to do the strengthening. So, in, the, in chapter number uh, 16, uh, the first verses, Paul meets Timothy and he takes him as his son. So they begin to work together. Then again in chapter 16, there's a call, what we call the Macedonian call. So, uh, somebody appeared in a vision and Paul saw this person calling him, say, come! and help us this side. So they took that to mean that the Lord wanted them to go to Macedonia. 
So they went to Macedonia. And then in chapter 16, they were in Philippi. They have the first European convert. Her name is Lydia in, 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 in a Philippian, in, in, a, in, in a Acts chapter 16, verse from verse number 14 there. This lady, the seller of purple. And then again, we have, after that, uh, they have a slave girl with a spirit of divination who is delivered. And this slave girl, you know, when she was delivered, there was a lot of problem again on Paul and Silas. And they were thrown in prison. And when they were thrown in prison, remember, at the mid, mid hour, they were praying and praising the Lord, and the prison gates were open. Remember the story? You know. Then after that, uh, when Paul came out from the prison, Paul went to Thessalonica. In chapter number 17, he went to Thessalonica, where the gospel was also vehemently opposed in, in uh, Thessalonica. Then they moved to Berea. In Berea, uh, the Bible says that in the, the Bereans were a noble people because when they received the word, they went and checked from the Bibles to see whether the things that Paul was saying were right with what the law was saying. Then after Thessalonians and Berea, Paul goes to Athens in Greece. Okay? Then in chapter number 18, Paul goes to Corinth. He goes to Corinth now. And in Corinth, he meets Aquila and Priscilla. Aquila and Priscilla are Jews who were staying in Rome. But they had been chased away by the leader there because they said all Jews should leave Rome. So Aquila and Priscilla left and they came, came to, 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 to Corinth. And they were able to meet uh, our brother Paul there. And these people were of the same trade. They were tent makers. So they joined together and Paul was, you know, ministering with them. Then in, 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 a, in, a, in a Corinth, the gospel also is highly resisted and Paul decides now to go to the Gentiles. So this is where now we are meeting our passage for this year. Can I hear an amen? Those are the events. That's the background. I've given you the journey, how this thing came up to where we are right now in chapter number 18. Now, the Bible says again, in verse 5 and 6, when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, you know, uh, Silas and Timothy were left in Macedonia as, as Paul now traveled and he, went, he came to, to, to Thessalonica and then he came to, 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 to Corinth. Uh, then uh, these guys, Silas and Timothy, joined Paul in, in, in Cor Corinth. Okay? The Bible says, uh, when Silas and Timothy arrived from Macedonia, Paul was occupied with the word, testifying to the Jews that the Christ was Jesus. And when they opposed and reviled him, he shook out his garments and said to them, your blood be on your own heads. I am innocent. From now on, I will go to the Gentiles. Let's begin there. Let's begin there. Paul, the Bible says, this is very important. The number one thing that the, the Lord is telling us here, that, that the word of God should occupy us. Paul did not just wait, you know, he was occupied by the word. Let us find occupation in the word of God. In wherever, wherever we are, if we are, we, are, we, are, we are working in offices, let us be there, but let the word occupy us. The word occupied Paul. He gave testimonies of what God had done. We also, we need to give testimony of what the Lord is, uh, what the word is doing in our lives. That one alone is, is ministry. We should begin to speak the word of God. Giving testimony of what the word has done in our lives. Most of us have a testimony of what the word has done in our lives. Let's share that. Yeah? Let's share that. Find something to do with the word, in the word. Can I hear an amen? There is always something to do with the word. Don't be idle. Don't let the opportunity to occupy yourself with the word 
pass you by. Then the second thing we see here is that Paul was opposed. He was opposed. Eh? Paul was occupied with the one, and the Bible says he was opposed and reviled in, 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 in Corinth. Men of God face opposition. This is something else I need you to understand. Men of God, sent by God, also are able to face opposition. And sometimes they are reviled. Why? Because they represent another kingdom. And it's important for us to know that the evangelistic field is a battlefield. It's not a playing field. And at this point in time, Paul interpreted it to mean that the door to the Jews was closed. But God was opening another door for the gospel. Can I hear an amen? When there is opposition, don't just look at what is happening. Look for op open doors. Look for doors that are opening. There are times, ladies and gentlemen, when you need to face the opposition and push your agenda. But there are other times when you just let go and enter the next available door that is open. Can I hear amen? Badala ya kungangana na kupingana na watu, achana na huo mlango, kuna mwingine umefunguka. Because when one door is closed, another is opened by the law. You cannot fight forever. There are some of us who are here today that we have always been in perpetual fighting. One war after another. One war after another. Listen, you cannot fight forever. There are other strategies in winning a war. Not all wars are won by fighting. Some wars are won by letting go and enter to another place. Can I hear an amen? Let go and let God. And Paul said, your blood be on your own head. I am innocent. Sita ngangana na nyinyi. Shaurie. Mimi nasonga mbele. There are some times when what you have to offer is good. But people don't, need, don't want it. They reject it. So what you do, you move on. You move on. The gentle door was open. And Paul moved in. Don't be stranded. Brothers and sisters, child of God, don't be stranded. Remember the children of Israel, when they came at the brink of the, the Red Sea, they were stranded. They were stranded. The enemies were following them. And before them, there was the Red Sea. But God says, why are you stranded? Don't be stranded. Take a step of faith and move forward. Can I hear an amen? I see this being repeated in the lives of Paul here. The gentle, the gentile door was open. Look for that open opportunity and move on. Can I hear an amen? You are on a heavenly mission. Move on. And today in the mighty name of Jesus, this is my prayer, that your eyes will be open to see the open door in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. So that as this one door is closed, another one is being opened for you. In verse number 7, the Bible says, And he left there and went to the house of a man named Titus uh, Justus, or Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. His house was next door to the synagogue. So Paul, in other words, he shifted from the synagogue to a house. From a congregation to an individual family. It looked like a demotion, but Paul moved on. The Bible says Paul left so he can be able to go to another place. And this, is, this one caught my attention, ladies and gentlemen. There are people who want to go to another place, but they don't want to leave. They want to eat their cake and still want to have it. The Bible says he left there. He left it there and he went here. Can I hear an amen? There are things in our lives we must totally let them go and move to 
the next level. And I strongly believe this is one of one of the things the Lord is speaking to us. There are people who say, ah, iyo ni miachana na ayo, lakini badu tunakuta nyayo zako. Your footprints are still there. He left that he may be able to go. He left the synagogue. He left the Jews and engaged the Gentiles. We need to know, we need to, listen to me, we need to be willing to go through the pain of living. It's not easy to live. It's not easy to say bye-bye. It's not easy. But listen to me, if we are going to see the new glory, let us be willing to let go so we can be able to join in what the new thing that the Lord is doing. Can I hear an amen? And for Paul, it was a major shift, but he had to do it. And this season, the Lord was saying to me that watch out for shifts. Watch out for shifts. There will be shifting. There will be shifting. Watch out for shifting. Can I hear an amen? Kutakuwa na kuhama. Kutakuwa na muhamo. Watch out for shifts. Watch out for shift this season. Even if it means starting over again, do it. Don't be afraid of starting over again. Don't be afraid of small beginnings. He was with the congregation in the synagogue. But when the Bible says that when he left, he went to a house and met only one family. For a man like Paul, he would have said, ah, what a demotion. But listen to me. God can bring you to a, to a, 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 a starting small that you may be able to gather the momentum and be able to go forward for where he wants you to go. So the synagogue, I want you to understand this, the synagogue was a familiar and a normal way for Paul. It was what Paul was used to. God is shifting us, ladies and gentlemen. God is shifting us to the unfamiliar territory. He is shifting us from what we are used to, to a place of something different. You know, what makes something feared is because people are not used to it. The unknown is feared so much. But we should be willing to move to the unknown territories. There is need, therefore, ladies and gentlemen, to be flexible in the hands of the Almighty. Can I hear an amen? In the hands of the Almighty. Step into the unfamiliar door boldly by faith. Step into the unfamiliar door. Go to what you don't know by faith. If you know that's where the Lord is leading you, move there by faith. Can I hear an amen? Just as a Gentile opened his door for the gospel. While the other uh, 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 Jews were, were, were refusing and opposing the gospel, a, a visitor was able to open his house for the gospel. And this is what the Lord was ministering to us. He says that the next available opportunity for most of us is not far away. Just as house was just next to the synagogue. Shifting does not mean that you have to it can also mean changing the way you are doing things. Paul is in the synagogue here. Opposite, I'm a next door. Kuna jamaa mesema karibu njoka. Tumekatoku kwa ye, njoka hapa kwa mga. Sometimes the opportunity that you need to, to grab is not actually far away from you. Can I hear an amen? It's not far away from you. Divine connections are not far away, brethren. May God raise a justice for you in the name of Jesus. Someone that will embrace you and celebrate your ministry. Someone that when you are rejected in one place, he will accept you the way you are. Justice was at the right place. He was right there. You are a minister of God on earth. You are a man on assignment. 
And therefore you can look to heaven and say, Heavenly Father, may you raise a justice for me. Hallelujah. Somebody that will celebrate me. You know all of us have some weaknesses. We may be, we, we are not complete in one way or the other. You may have some strength, you may have some weaknesses. And you know that there are places where people magnify your weakness more than your strength. But your justice will magnify, you know, will get hold. Even if you the weakness, he will take hold of your weakness and be able to celebrate you even in that area that you seem like you're not able to do anything. Hallelujah. And then I can see something else again, verse number 7, that the chief ruler of the synagogue, Crispus, became a believer. Their ruler was now a Christian, so they were without excuse. People in leadership, this is something very powerful for our church and for our businesses, wherever we are. People in leadership were also members of the church. Hii maneno ya kwamba kanisa inabaki tu na watu wale wa chini peke yake sivyo hapa. Viongozi wanakuwa washirika wa kanisa. Amina governor wa mshirika, MC wa mshirika, wale viongozi wa mtaa, viongozi wa county, viongozi wa serikali, viongozi wa makanisa wote watambue na waweze kuja chini kuabudu uweponi mwa Mwenyezi Mungu. Kana hii ene amen. I want us to be able to cast our net wide as we evangelize. Wengine wetu, uh, listen to me, listen to me. Kuna wengine wetu, maybe the way we evangelize, we can only wahubiria wale watu wachini. And it's okay. And it's okay. And I, I can see this in the spirit, that the Lord is going to increase us, going to give us the strategy to be able to let in. Because there are so many people in the leadership who wants to come and worship God. They are there. Christmas was one of them. Na akakuja. Na familia yake. Bwana sitiwe. Though the Corinthians were bad people, when they had the gospel, the Bible says they believed. Many believed and were baptized. So this also became a problem. It raised a lot of problems for Paul. Okay? Kumbuka the synagogue is here. And he has just entered this other, he has just entered in this other house. Okay? So these people in the synagogue wanaona kwamba hata yo mkubwa wa synagogue pia meokoka. Na watu wengine wazele kwa. So it was a problem. It was a threat on Paul's life. He was depressed and contemplated moving to another place. And this is the place that God came in. Jesus came in a vision. Came in in a dream. Can I hear an amen? The, and the Lord said, verse number 9 and 10. And the Lord said to Paul, one night in a vision. Can I hear an amen? Usiku moja tu katika maono, katika ndoto. Alimambia nini? Do not be afraid. But go on speaking and do not be silent. Because Paul has always been, if I am opposed, I will go to another town. If I am opposed here, I will go to another town. At this time, Jesus says, don't leave in this place. Keep on speaking. Don't be quiet. Can I hear an amen? That's a word for us. It's a word for us. Okay? He says, why? Why shouldn't you leave? Why shouldn't you be quiet? He says, because I am with and no one will attack you to harm you. And please, check your Bible very well. From that point going forward, Paul was arrested, but he was never beaten. He was never beaten. He was never whipped. From that point onward. Huku kwa ingini, alikuwa kipatikana na chapwa. Mutu anapumzika kuchapwa katika jina la Yesu. Hallelujah. Kuna watu anachapwanga. Wanachapwa. From that point going forward, nobody will attack you to harm you. Up, up to, up to, up to chapter number 18. pale chini, Paul was caught. Okay? Akapele kwa prison. Lakini, badewa kaja kamtoa. Amen. Akasema, ah, baba, mbetushika hadharani, mbeta kutuko 
unataka kutupo unataka kutuachilia privately atutoki privately <laughs> haleluya the lord said i am going to be with you for he says for i have many in this city who are my people and this is encouraging sometimes you are in a place maybe you are in a family na wewe unasema labda mimi peke yangu ndio nimeokoka katika family labda ni mimi peke yangu ndio nimeokoka katika hapa mahali lakini Yesu anasema ijapo hawajaokoka kwa hiyo familia usiondoke hiyo familia kuna watu wanaokoka na utakuwa na wenzako hapa bwana Yesu asifiwe hiyo kampuni hiyo job unaofanya kuna watu pale wa Yesu hawajakuja bado lakini wataokoka kwa jina la Yesu so an encouragement from the lord is what we all need one night message was enough to change the situation The Lord himself appeared to Paul and encouraged him. Paul had hit rock bottom but Jesus appeared to him. And this is my prayer that God will cause us to receive a word of encouragement from his mouth. No one of a gross encouragement. We all need encouragement. Can I hear an amen? We all need to be encouraged. And the word is don't be afraid, don't fear. Fear not. Scripture is full. Somebody said that there are fear not. There are 365 fear not passages in the Bible. In other words, one fear not for every day. There are 365 days in our year. And there are 365 fear not in the Bible. That means every day when you wake up, there's a fear not for you. Can I hear amen? Be encouraged. Christ's words came at the right time. May Christ show forth to someone here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So in this place also we see a mission was renewed. He says don't be afraid of the Jews. They are outrageous. They are angry because of the conversion of the synagogue chief ruler. Since Paul was advancing the cause of the kingdom, he had no reason to be afraid. You too, ladies and gentlemen, Since you are in a kingdom you are in a kingdom assignment you have nothing to fear Paul was told speak and do not be quiet don't be shy don't be cautious about anything be bold and speak and Paul was assured of Christ's presence he was told i am with you to work with you i am with you to confirm your words with sons following Paul was given a warrant also of protection he was told no one shall set on you to hurt you that he will be set upon but will not be hurt that he shall not be beaten that he shall not be imprisoned here that his life will take a new direction from that day forward he would not be treated as he had been treated before weeping may endure for a night for a night but joy comes in the morning can i hear an amen the bible says in the book of i uh, psalm, uh, psalms chapter 66 verse 10 you may have gone through fire but the lord is bringing you to a wealthy place can i hear an amen the lord is bringing you to a wealthy place enough is enough says the lord you will fulfill your mandate with your head up in the name of jesus no more humiliation and no more shame in the name of jesus No man shall set on you to harm you again. Psalm 23 verse number 4. The Bible says even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. You are rod and your staff they comfort me. Isaiah 41 verse number 10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand can i hear an amen then also paul was given a prospect of success he said he was told i have many in this city who are my people he was assured that his ministry would prosper there's nothing as beautiful as going to a place to start a church and the lord says there are many people here who are coming to be members of your church and that's what paul was saying. he says i have many in this city who are my people that Christ had much people in that city of Corinth Paul's ministry would yield more souls what an encouragement that he would succeed there 
God knows those who are his and have not yet come into his kingdom. He knows. You know, the so and so is coming, though he's not yet there. Though the city is wicked and the city is full of impurities, Jesus had his people in Corinth. There is treasure. And I want you to catch this. There is treasure in the dirt. There is treasure in the dirt. One of them to the Listen to me. Corinth was a very bad city. But inside that bad city, inside that dark city, inside that immoral city, there were people that God called Aliwaita Watuake. Let's, let us be encouraging that. Do not despair in any place you go because even in Corinth, God had much people. There was a stay of 18 months. Paul stayed in Corinth for 18 months. Why did he stay there in 18 months? Not because the people could not be converted in a single day or month, but because sometimes uh, some things are done in a process. There was a process. The process is necessary for both the work and the worker. Establishing a church requires that those being converted need also to be taught. Sometimes when we are going, we go to start churches, we want those churches to pick up and become thousands in one day or in one month or maybe in one year. But sometimes when that yield comes up, it can destroy us because we need also to grow. We need to grow. As we grow the church, we need to grow in our inside. And then I see something else, ladies and gentlemen. I see God's grace in times of depression. At the time Paul was down, Christ came to him in a vision of the night and gave him a word. God cares and sees us in what we go through. I want you to know that. God cares and he sees us in what we go through. Christ gave Paul the restful assurance that however men might oppose and trouble him, God accepted his service, that God will guard him from all evil until his work was complete. Second Timothy chapter 4 verse 17 the Bible says but the Lord stood by me and strengthened me so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. And this is what the Lord is saying ladies and gentlemen that I picked from this. And the Lord is saying you have gone through a season of depression and trouble but be aware, I am actually present with you. Can I hear an amen? You may not always feel me, but I'm always present with you. Remember I told you that I will never leave you or forsake you. The Lord is saying that he will never fail in his gracious and tender interest with his servants. That he will manifest himself to his servants at the point of their needs. He's saying, he is near in a unique way. All comfort, strength, and security for all my servants come with this conviction that I am near to them. When you are convicted that God is near with you, then you are able to receive strength, you are able to receive security, you are able to receive comfort. The Lord is telling us also, times of depression are not unusual experience for my people. Times of depression may come in the very midst of your work. Times of depression are under my gracious watching and I allow them for my purpose. My presence and my word is more real to you than the circumstance. Times of depression are not for you to quit but to boldly engage. Don't just sit there and watch. Arise and speak. Don't be afraid. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, 2022 will be for us our year of speaking out in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2022 will be for us a year of speaking out. Don't be quiet. And I will share with us on, Saturday, on Sunday because there are three dimensions we need to speak out. We need to speak forth. We need to speak for and we need to speak against. I will share with you on Sunday. But basically, we have a year ahead of us that we must be able to engage our mouth to declare the will of God. 
for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Let's rise up on our feet and begin to pray. Begin to pray. The Lord has come to encourage you. The Lord has come to give you comfort. The Lord has come to show that you, he is closer to you like never before. In the mighty name. Just lift up your hands and just appreciate. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. Appreciate God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Father, we magnify your holy name. Father, we worship you. We magnify your holy name, our God. There is no one else like you, Jesus Christ. Receive all the praise and the glory. Thank you, O Father. The Lord, the Bible says, King of glory in the book of Luke. The Lord, you have given us a mouth and a wisdom, O God, that no man shall be able to resist and gain say. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for boldness upon my brothers and sisters, O God, that they begin to speak the word of faith. They begin to engage the word of faith. In the name of Jesus, they begin to glorify your God by the words of their mouth, O oh my Father, engaging the enemy, engaging and giving testimony, speaking the gospel to every place in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we give you glory and we give you praise. In Jesus' precious name, we pray. And the people say, give God a mighty hand clap, hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. 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 I want us to be off before we do something else. I want us to be off before we do something else. Are we off? All right. We're off now. We're off now. In Jesus' name.